pretty good. I like having the garden for, for that kind of stuff. Where did Eros go? Brian, where's the dog? Eros, would you like a probiotic treat? That's a good dog. Nope, he spit, <laughs> he it, he out. spit it out. Oh, not a goat after all. I know. Yes, you are a very hungry boy, aren't you? Make him reach for it. Oh, reach for it a little more. <laughs> Oh, you can almost get it. Oh, it's so good. Oh. <laughs> it's been a nice warm day. This morning, we gave Lightning Bug, one of our original breeding bucks, a bath. If you know goats, you know goats do not like getting wet. Lightning Bug did protest, but he did pretty well overall. I wish I could have gotten video of it but he's got some kind of a skin condition and is losing some hair. Wendy prefers me not to show him in this condition on camera, so I'll respect her wishes. There is an earlier video that shows us giving goats a bath for the very first time. You can check that one out if you want. We set up this goat milking stanchion to hold the goat here. It's in a relatively open area and the hose reaches here just fine, so it's pretty convenient. This morning we had shade from the trees. It would have been perfect for video because the rhododendron behind me is right now in full bloom. Okay. Yeah, a whole bunch will come up in one spot and then nothing in another, so that's a little bit annoying. I think they have eaten them, so. Birds or squirrels might yeah, be something. moving around or. Something, so. Um, and I also planted. Uh, shoot, what are they? Ground cherries in here. But I'm not sure those are necessarily coming up yet or not either. So usually with our area, the ground cherries and tomatillos just kind of come up, whether I want them to or not. If I've had them the prior year, so I just plenty of volunteers. Yeah. So now with those kinds of seeds, I usually just kind of throw them in there and cover them with some dirt and. Um, call it good but for some reason this year they're not coming up I don't know if maybe my seeds were too old or something like that so sorry it's really distracting because the dog is just being silly <laughs> he's found something some smell that he really likes right there and he's just going to town on it he's a goober in here and along the next couple I've got different types of cucumbers so I will eat tons and tons whatever this garden puts out of lemon cucumbers and other small snacking cucumbers so I always grow a bunch of those because it's so shady right here though they don't produce a whole ton of a lot so um, maybe eventually we have a space to put cucumbers where they'd have more light but for right now I just kind of put a ton of them in there and I get what I get some of the ones at the end are hopefully going to be pickling cucumbers in this one, so I'll have a few of those as well. And then in this bed, I've got beans, and in this, 
middle area. I actually screwed up a little because I, I put in um, pole beans, even though I had right in my hand uh, the right beans, the bush beans that I meant to put in the actual bed part. I only meant to put the pole beans along this end, but I kind of screwed up and put them in the middle too. So we're going to have to shift them <laughs> to go up this way. So it's going to look a little funny, but whatever. And then we have a whole bunch of nasturtiums that I've planted in here. So along the little corners of the beds and things, you'll see these little... And the nasturtiums are for pollinators? They're for pollinators and bees and hummingbirds and things like them a lot so I like to plant them and they're also good to just throw on top of a salad because mm. they're edible they can have a peppery taste mm. so I'll make pretty salads if we get any before my lettuce goes to seed. Arrows come here so I have bush beans in this bed we actually have quite a bit of bush beans because I just soaked a ton and planted them all over the place. He's having a good old time. <laughs> I need to mow out here. It's getting tall again. Yeah. We've got some onions in here. I think some of these are red onions. Um, and then this is my second planting of arugula, which is already looking like it's going to go to seed. So I don't know if I'll get a second. It's just been too warm and arugula likes it cooler. And also things keep pulling them up, so that doesn't help. Squirrels. And in here, I've got some peas, which will hopefully grow up the thing. Right now, they seem to want to just cluster around each other. Um, and then I've got some more of that second planting of arugula. And these are bush peas, these ones not on the trellis, so we'll see how they do. They're getting a little bit eaten with slugs right now. In this bed I've got leeks, and then I've got some volunteers of my borage, which is kind of all over the garden right now. And then I also had thrown in a few of what's in this other bed. The other diamond bed. Jerusalem artichokes. Which is some more Jerusalem artichokes. So. Yeah. And those will grow really tall and have hopefully flowers on them. Um, but the other bed is just stocked full of them. In here I've got just a ton of really beautiful Swiss chard. And then on this side it's spinach. And then over here I've got different kinds of salad greens that are still doing really well so I need to get in here and pick these um, and then I have a second planting of a different kind of salad green in there I'm not very good at knowing what kinds they are this is like yeah you know, Paris Island romaine and then these little ones are this dwarf romaine. I, I like the romaine because it's a little more crunchy. And these red ones don't get the slugs as much. So I try and kind of crowd the, <laughs> the green stuff out with red stuff to keep the slugs out a bit more. Now, I don't eat the salads very often, but how often are you eating salads right out of the garden? Oh, maybe... Maybe five or six days a week. And then, of course, I eat the Swiss chard and the, the spinach almost every day for breakfast. So I With our eggs? Yeah, yeah. I'll make a big handful of it and just cook it down and then mix two eggs in it. So it's mostly, honestly, more greens than anything else. So I'm probably getting twice my daily needs for green vegetables just because of that so it's pretty good I like having the garden for for that kind of stuff where'd arrows go Brian where's the dog arrows arrows he's over here arrows get over here bad dog So I've got more peas in here 
and then there is also more boards you can see here there's a ton of it coming up and in a lot of the beds I just have a couple onions too so you'll see those along the sides this is some not doing very good cauliflower you can see some of them are really getting chewed on and I keep coming out and pulling what leaves I can off of them but they're just not they're kind of renty for some reason in this bed everything is just kind of renty except for the borage and the flowers and so this is what the it should look like that that size planted yeah. at the same time I think so within a few days of each other Yep, that's a big difference. Mm -hmm. Even a big yeah. difference just in this bed. Yeah, yeah. That little tiny one there versus the big one in the yeah, corner. Yeah, well, that might have been like a little bonus one that I just planted. So it was probably smaller to start with. In here, I've got some kale and then I've got some cabbage, which is feels a little bit crowding, but it will be fine. And then on this side, I've got my old arugula, which you can see is totally gone to seed. And so I've been feeding this to the boy goats. Cabbage coming on, which is good because we love cabbage. And I make it with with just like a saute with some cabbage and um, sausage. Some some of those long smoke sausage rings, and I just chop that up into the sections. And then we get frozen pierogies and make a big fry up with it, basically. So I make it in my walk. That's pretty good. So this is my asparagus. This is brand new planted asparagus. Yep, yep. So we've got some some green Martha Washington and some purple. I forget what the purple stuff is called. And then I also had an extra couple peppers, so I just put those in there by together in the middle just to kind of be able to see how much different they grow in here versus in my little plastic greenhouse. Now asparagus takes a while to uh, mature. Yeah. Several several years. Several years. So this will just keep growing up and dying back and it will kind of put off some seeds and it'll get nice and thick eventually and then they'll be able to harvest crowns off of it. And I've got this is a bit of a messy bed because it's got some weeds in it. I also tried to plant a bunch of old squash seeds that I had, both summer and winter squash, and they're really not coming up. So I did get like a, a watermelon from the grocery store, and then I also got some, let's see, what's in here? I've got some sunburst squash over there as well, but I'm kind of just waiting and seeing what comes up because I did plant a whole bunch of flower seeds in here and they've started to kind of come up. So we're waiting and seeing, I guess is what I'm saying. So we'll, we'll see what this bed looks like. Right now it's kind of a hot mess. So this is the pepper room. I've got a whole bunch of different kinds of peppers in here. I've got Anaheim, Ancho pepper. Um, see, this is a jalapeno, a poblano, another Ancho, another poblano. And then these in here are all um, jalapenos. And then I've got some sweet peppers back here. This one is a sweet and hot pepper so that will be interesting you will get out of that and then I have a whole bunch of these shishito peppers which I really like to have in my eggs in the morning so I'm hoping to get a whole bunch of them so that I can have some that I keep for winter to have for when we don't have all the peppers in the garden um, and then this is two maybe three eggplants that I planted this one was a tag along with that one so we'll see how they do I don't usually have very good luck here with eggplants they kind of just end up being pretty runty 
So what are these treats? These are goat probiotics plus treats. They taste like apple, apparently. I'll take your word for it. They smell sweet. The goats really seem to like them. But they've got... Is it good for their hair or muscles or well, just anything in general? that's why I got them is because it has vitamin A in them. It's not a lot, but it's enough to at least give them a little bit of something, something, I guess. Um, but it's also got like vitamin E and selenium and copper and calcium and a bunch of fat and protein. Eros, would you like a probiotic treat? Nope, he spit, <laughs> spit it he out. spit it out. Oh, not a goat after all. Here, DJ, you can have it. Dog slobber. <laughs> like dog slobber. <laughs> More dog slobber, mama? <laughs> get it, get it. <laughs> Better after his bath. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, lightning bug usually hangs back. He doesn't really engage usually. <laughs> yeah, Clyde likes to bite.